In Creo Parametric, you can create assemblies which are CAD models that contain other components which are either parts or other assemblies. And when an assembly appears in another assembly, we refer to it as a sub-assembly. In the next two videos, we are going to build up this particular assembly using some basic techniques including constraints and connections and we'll also do some explode states and make a mechanism analysis. Let me show you this assembly. I'm going to use the exploded view to show you the different components. So we have a bunch of different parts and we have a connecting rod subassembly. In this video, we are going to make the connecting rod assembly. Let me open it up in its own separate window in order to show it to you. It just has a few different components. I'll go to the exploded view to show you how they fit together. So this is what we're going to build. Let's get at it. To create a brand new assembly, you can click on the new icon in the quick access toolbar. Also, it is the keyboard shortcut of control N, just like in Microsoft products. Let me click on the new icon and here we get the new model dialog box. By default, it is set to part. I want to create an assembly, so I will choose that radio button. There are a bunch of different subtypes, but the one that you will use the most often is the design subtype. Then we have the file name and the common name. And at many companies, the file name is going to be a number. So for example, maybe it's going to be 54-1234-01. But people can't remember all the different numbers of objects in your data management systems or your network drives. That's why you also typically use a common name. I will type in the connecting rod assembly. And the advantage of entering a common name is that if you're using a data management system like Windchill, you can search on the common name for objects. Here we have an option to use the default template. You can set up multiple different templates for you to use. So for example, by default, I'm using a metric template, but I have a variety of other different templates that I've set up for myself, like when I'm working on aerospace stuff, or if I want to use a different unit system. When you go to select a default template, you will probably go to a folder in your load point where PTC has provided a number of different default templates for you to use, but I'm using different ones that I've created myself. So now after I've selected my template, I can click the OK button and my new assembly is started. If you take a look in the model tree, our template automatically provides a few features for us. These are the default datum planes and a default coordinate system. If you want to see these objects in the graphics area, you can go to the In Graphics toolbar, and from the dropdown, you can choose to display your coordinate systems and your datum planes, and now we can see them. In a moment, I will turn them off. Now I want to start bringing components into my assembly. To do that, you will use the assemble command. And if I leave my mouse over the icon for a moment, we can see from the tooltip that the keyboard shortcut for assemble is the letter A. So I will click on assemble and it goes to my working directory or the last active folder. And I can look in here for which part I want to use. And again, if your company is using a bunch of numbers for the name, you could use the preview button and for the different objects, you can see what they are in order to select the one that you want to use. Be aware that you can also change the way that the objects are listed in here. Maybe you want to show them by thumbnails or details instead to facilitate selection. But let me go back to the default list. I want the connecting rod. I will just double click on it in order to bring it into my assembly. And it just locates it somewhere in the graphics area. You'll notice that it has a kind of purplish color. This indicates that it is under constraint. Its location is not yet fully defined in the assembly. For the first component, you typically use the default constraint, which aligns the default coordinate system of the part that you're assembling to the default coordinate system of the assembly. 
let me right mouse click and hold and from the pop-up menu i can choose the default constraint be aware that you can also get to it from a couple different places in the dashboard interface but let me choose it from the pop-up menu and it relocates it so that again the origins between the two parts are aligned and it changes the color from that purplish color to this orangish color indicating that it is fully constrained i'm happy with that so i can hit the check mark be aware that the middle mouse button is the same thing as the check mark and already my screen is looking a little cluttered hey let me turn off the display of those different datums so now i've got my first component in here let's bring in the second component i will choose assemble and the second part that i want to bring in is going to be the connector cap i will double click on it and it gets placed in the assembly you'll notice that we have a 3d dragger this allows you to start positioning your component approximately where you want it to be and sometimes by doing this you can help get the right constraints when you are locating the component so now for the constraints that i want to use well i can just start picking geometry i can pick this cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface and it adjusts location of the components to make them coincident. In other words, it is aligning the axes of the cylindrical surfaces together. So that's good for my first constraint. Right now I am partially constrained. Let me choose to display the component in a separate window just to help select different objects. And if I'm displaying it in the separate window, I can turn off its display in the main window. I can also make it bigger in here. So for the second constraint that I am going to use, I can pick this flat surface and let me rotate and get a flat surface on the underside. Let's turn on the display back in the main window. Oops, it is oriented the wrong direction. Let me use the flip button. There we go. Now it is located a little bit better. And there's only one axis that's still available from the 3D dragger, meaning right now there is a translational degree of freedom. If I want to eliminate that translational degree of freedom, I can add another constraint. Maybe I'll pick a couple flat surfaces, or maybe I'll select a couple of the different holes. And now we are fully constrained. It changed to an orange color. I'm happy with that. Let's hit the check mark. So now I've got my two components in here for the connecting rod, but now I need some fasteners in order to hold them together. And so I've already had those fasteners created, I could use them, or you can use something called the Intelligent Fastener Extension. If I go to the Tools menu, over on the right hand side, we have the ability to put in dowel pins, we have the ability to put in screws, and then we have the ability to repeat that process for other different locations. So let's take a look at doing this. I'm going to turn on my axis display for a moment. When I turned on the axis display, I didn't get the axes I wanted through this part. That means that they're probably on a layer that's hidden. So I can use my layers to turn on the display of axes in this part. To get to your layers command, you can use the view tab in the ribbon. And over on the left, here is layers. And right now it's showing me all the layers for all the different objects in the assembly. You can use the pick icon if you want to look at the layers only in an individual model. Here is the axes layer, it is hidden. I can choose show and when I zoom in and zoom out that repaints the screen and I can see that yep now I have my axis visible that I want let me use the layers command to toggle the display and I will repaint the screen so that anything that was selected will no longer be selected let's go back to the tools tab and here is the screw command for assembling on references so when I click on that, here we have in the Select References dialog box, we can select the position for the fasteners, which can either be a point or an axis. Hey, let me select the axis that I made visible. Now for the placement surface, I will have the screw head on this surface. 
And for the nut or thread surface, I will pick the bottom surface on the connector cap. That looks good. There's an option if you wanted to change the alignment in case you did not have your fastener going in perpendicular to the axis. Let me go to the OK button. And now we can start configuring the fastener that we want to use. And here it went to the millimeter catalog. You can see that we have a variety of different catalogs. And as I choose the different catalogs, it's changing the fasteners. Let me turn off washers for a moment. And right now it is using a fastener that's way too big. I happen to know that this hole is a quarter inch. And based on the library that I'm using, the smallest hole is a quarter inch. But that's not going to work. Let's go back to the millimeter catalog and change to a different size. Let's use this icon in the screw fastener definition dialog box to measure a diameter. That way I can measure the hole. It automatically selects which fastener to use. And right now it's using too short of a fastener. Let's use this icon in order to set the length automatically. And I can see that there are only three lengths available here for that particular fastener. The M3 is fine. And I also want to throw in some washers. So let's use this button to throw in a washer on top. And let's also throw in a washer down at the bottom. Here we have the nut that's being used. And again, there's a drop down list where you can configure if you want to use a different one instead. And I like what I'm seeing in the preview and in the graphics area. Let me click the OK button. And so now I've got a group of components that were added for that fastener group. To get the same thing over on the other side, I can use the reassemble command. And now it prompts me to select the fastener that I want to use. And then let's select the new axis. And you can see the preview. I'll click the OK button. And you can repeat that as many times as you want for populating locations. It will also automatically recognize different patterns that you have in your model. So now I have my subassembly created. If I want to explode this, we can use the view manager. If I go to the icon that looks like a camera on a sheet of paper, that is the view manager. You can also get to that from the view tab over here. It's also available on the model tab. But from the view manager dialog box, right now I'm on the explode tab. There is a default exploded view, which you can activate. I don't like that. Let me toggle that from being exploded. I'm going to create a new explode state. You can rename it if you want. I'll just hit the enter key. And now I will right click on it to edit the position and move the components around the way that I want them to. So I can grab this component. And when I left click on it, I'm going to get a default set of axes for where I want to drag this. I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. And then let me then select a couple other different components using the control key. That way I can grab the fasteners and move them out the same distance. Then let me grab these two washers and move them up. And let's see, let's take a look down at the bottom. Oops, I cannot see the fasteners because I moved this component in the middle of them. Then let's grab these two using the control key. I'll drag them down. Let's left click on the two washers using the control key, drag them down, and then just grab this component, move it up a little bit. That's good. Last thing to show you in here, in the dashboard there is an explode lines tab. This icon is automatically active, which, or actually you have to cl left click on it. Then you get the dialog box where you can create some explode lines. So I'll create an explode line from there to there and hit the apply button. And then there to there. I like to do, to do them individually from one component to another. Let me just do that a bunch of different times. And let me create one from say here. I'm going to, Move my mouse and then tap the right mouse button. That is called Query Select, 
when I get the correct surface highlighting, then I can left click on it and then hit the apply button. And so in that way, I can continue putting in the explode lines that I want in my model. And that's good enough. You get the point. I won't create the last few ones. Let's close this dialog box, hit the check mark, and then I can right click on the name of the explode state and then choose save in order to update the definition and close out of here. So in this way, I have created my subassembly that I'm then going to use in the engine assembly. And right from the ribbon, you can toggle whether you're looking at this exploded or not. So there we have it. We've created our subassembly using a couple of static components and then using a couple fastener groups. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.